Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video, this is gonna be part one of a multiple uh, video series on the mastering uh, suite software Ozone 9. Um, we're gonna take a look at, do a little walkthrough today. I'm gonna show you some of the basic features and how it's kind of laid out. And over the next several videos, I'm gonna show you the way I use it. Now there are a lot of videos on YouTube, even from the company Oz Isotope themselves, um, who've done a real, a lot of in-depth on every single module and every single feature. We're not gonna dive into that through this very video series. We're not gonna get too technical. We're gonna stay very layman's terms, very uh, easy to use in the way I kind of use it to help master your music. So this will be part one of a several part series. It'll be in a playlist called um, Isotope um, Ozone 9. You can check the playlist. The link will be down in the description. So before we jump in here and take a look at the lay of the land here, if this is your first time here, please head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I wanna give you a free gift. I wanna give you a free mixing training course. It's right on the homepage at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Click on the orange button, Get your free course today. Um, and also there'll be a coupon code in the description box below. If you like any of the courses on my website, homerecordingmadeeasy.com, you could take 25% off by using the coupon code YouTube25. So go check that out um, and enjoy the free course and get yourself some extra training at 25% off. So let's head on over here into Ozone 9. <clears throat> Pardon me. So there are a couple of different versions of Ozone 9, and you want to go to the website over at Isotope to check current pricing and current feature set. Depending on when you're watching this video, some things can change. I'll leave the link in the description box below. But as of the recording in this video, there are uh, two different versions. There's a standard version and there's an ultimate version or an advanced version. I have the advanced version here. The difference between the standard and the advanced is about a $250 price difference, roughly US dollars. Um, and also in the um, more fully featured in the advanced version, you have some additional modules that are not part of the standard feature. Um, and also you can use the advanced not only as a standalone version, software suite, which is what we're looking at here, but you can also use it as a plugin inside of your DAW, which you cannot do on the standard version, at least as of the recording of this video, but you could check the link below. You could go out to their website at Isotope and you can check out the current information. So when you first open up the standalone um, session or the program, this is the layout that you kind of get. It's so what I love about this program, and I've only been using it for a, a few short months for mastering, is that it's very clean, it's very easy, it's not too overwhelming. It doesn't look like a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's really easy to navigate. So when you open it up, this is what you're gonna see. So let's take a walk through in this video how this is kind of laid out. So if we start at the top left-hand corner, we have this thing called the Mastering Assistant, which right now it's grayed out because I have not imported any audio yet. We'll do that in a second. I'll show you in a separate video what the Mastering Assistant is all about. But that's a really cool way to help you get your basic settings for the mastering of your particular song without having to know really anything about mastering in and of itself. So that's a really cool feature. Check out the video in the playlist to look at that specifically. Next to that, we have a bunch of presets and a bunch of presets again to help you kind of get in the ballpark to what your song is and what mastering um, a basic set of settings and modules, if you will. So they have a bunch of really cool presets here by uh, all-purpose mastering, you can look through those. Genre-specific, which is really helpful, and we'll take a look at some of these in future videos. Instrument and buses, again, if you're using this inside of your DAW as a plugin, this is really cool, where you could insert this on instruments and buses, and it'll kind of give you kind of a, a basic set of, uh, of, of modules and presets. And then there's some signature presets here as well. So that's the preset area. You can save your own presets once you developed a customized maybe uh, workflow and module setup. Um, you can save that as a preset of your own for future use. And you can show this at startup if you'd like. And okay, that's the preset area. Then next to that we have our transport controls, pretty standard. We have our, our little uh, you know counter here so you can see where we are in the song. Underneath, uh, over to the far right, we have an undo button. You can, can you can um, you know undo and redo. So we have that. We have an undo um, history list, so you can see what you've done in the past 
here as far as what have you turned on, turned off. Every action that you do in, in Ozone 9 is kind of cataloged so you can go back and you can see that for reference if you need it. Uh, next to that, we have our little gear, which is our, oops, close this, our little gear here, which is our settings, our preferences window. Again, we'll walk through this more in a later video, but you have some all these different tabs in the way you want Ozone 9 to kind of behave and kind of set up customized for you. And we'll look at this in a little more detail in another video, but that's under the, the little gear at the top. And then probably one of my favorite features of this particular software, and I highly recommend that people do this. A lot of people overlook this. We all do this, right? Is if you click on this, you go out to their website and they have the user manual. <laughs> so you can look at by the different modules, how each one of them work. And here, right when you click on that, you will be brought to what's new in Ozone 9. And as I said earlier, let me kind of turn on the brightness here, you can see the differences between the standard version and the advanced version and what is new as of the recording of this video. So as I said, we have the, I have the advanced version. Now the advanced version has a module called low end focus, which doesn't come in the standard version. That's a really cool module worth having. And probably my most favorite module that we will look at in a separate video called the master rebalance. This is worth the price of the upgrade to advance in and of itself. And we'll look at that in another video. It's got a, you know, a, all, a few additional modules here, codec previews and stuff that you don't get in the standard version. And as I said, you can use the advanced version as a plugin in your DAW, which you can't with the standard. But you can also click on any one of the modules, anything to do with Ozone 9, and it will bring you right to that page, tell you every single control, what it does, how to use it. Really, really helpful. And again, what I like what they did here is it's written in a very kind of a non-technical way. It's very easily laid out. It's not one of these manuals that look like, you know, an encyclopedia. You could just go to the module or to the section of Ozone 9 that you um, want to learn more about, and it's really well laid out. So I highly, highly recommend that when you get Ozone 9 to really maximize the use of the of the program to get the most out of your mastering. So that's again up here where the question mark is. Underneath that, you have this blank area where we're gonna import our audio and I'm gonna do that for you in a second so you'll see where that is. Then we have our module chain right here or our signal flow. And again, it starts off when you open up the program, it defaults with an EQ and a maximizer. And again, you can add a module here by clicking the list. Um, and again, we will do this um, in future videos and you can add as many modules as you need. You can reorder them by left clicking and dragging if you wanna do that. And you can close them or get rid of them by clicking the X button. So that's the signal chain and all the different modules. We'll look more at that in future videos. Underneath that in the big uh, screen here, we, when we click on a module, you'll see all the different um, parameters and data that ha goes with that particular module. Here's an EQ, right? Here's our EQ, really nice. Beautiful laid out interface, real easy on the eyes, easy to see, really, really nice. I love the way they laid this out. The other thing about the standalone version and with the plugin version as well is you can resize the window, which is beautiful. So you can fill it up to the size of your screen or you can shrink it down if you're using a smaller screen like a laptop, really nice. But what I love about this is that it's just beautiful, easy to see not a lot of stuff on the screen. Okay, so that's this big area as well. Over to the right, we have our metering. We have our input on the left-hand side, prior when you first bring your audio in, what, what the uh, input meter is, and then after the processing, the output meter. So we'll look at that in some future videos as well. Underneath that, we have our bypass button, which will bypass all of the modules, so you can get a true on-off A-B comparison with processing or with mastering. Without mastering, let me listen to my original song. This is a very helpful button next to this, and we'll look at this in a future video as well, called Gain Match. What happens when you master, one of the things that you do is you turn up the overall volume level from the original volume level to bring it to a commercial standard. So let's say you bring in an audio file that starts at like a negative 6 dB, roughly. You're gonna put a maximizer on that's gonna raise it probably five to five and a half dB. So you're gonna have a huge volume difference, right? So when you use your bypass and you turn your mastering on and off, it's also gonna turn your maximizer or your limiting on and off, which means you're gonna hear the big volume jump. 
And sometimes it's more challenging to tune our ears into what are the, all the other mastering processing doing to my audio aside from volume? How do I get that true AB comparison without that big volume jump? You do that with this thing called gain match. That will allow the before and after to be at the same volume level so you can just hear what is my EQ doing, what is any compression doing, or any other modules that you are using here in Ozone 9. Very, very handy feature. We will take a look at that in another video as well. So that's bypass in gain, in gain match. Underneath that, we can turn this from a mono. We can fold it down from stereo to mono if you want to hear your master in mono, which is, I guess, is always a good way to check that. Underneath that, we can uh, preview the codecs uh, for, for bit rates and for formats and stuff. Again, this is something that you don't get in the standard version. This is only in the advanced version. Again, we'll take a look at that in another video. And then we have our dithering. We can also take a look at that. We have some different settings, bit depth, dither dithering amount, noise shaping, a whole bunch of cool things in here that we can help customize the way the mastering is applied to our audio. We'll take a look at that in another video. And that is the entire layout. So as you can see, it's not much. It's very clean. It's very well thought out and very well laid out. Okay, so that is the layout of Ozone 9 Advanced. And again, standard's gonna look the same. You're just gonna be short a few of the different modules as we talked about a second ago. In the next video, we're gonna to start to import some audio and I'm gonna show you how to do that and how to kind of use the master assistant and how to get started with the mastering process. So I hope you come back and join me for the next video. Now, I wanna hear from you below in the comments. Do you use mastering software? What do you use for mastering? Do you master your own music? If you do, how do you do it? If you don't, why don't you do it? Is it because you're not sure how mastering works? Well, over the next several videos, we're gonna do that here in Ozone 9, but what if you don't wanna buy Ozone 9? What if you don't have the budget to spend 250 bucks, or in this case, 500 bucks, for uh, something like Isotope Ozone 9? Well, what do you do? How do you master? Do I need to have mastering software, Dave? Great question. You may want to check out my Mastering Made Easy course that was brand new, uh, did here in 2020, so it's completely rebuilt. Brand new course, Mastering Made Easy. Link will be in the description box below. I show you not only how to master using uh, just any DAW where you don't need any mastering software, but I also show you how to master in PreSonus Studio One version five. If you're a Studio One user, Studio One has its own mastering suite called the project page. And I also show you how to use this Ozone 9 as well and um, mastering made easy. Click the link in the description box below and use the coupon code. YouTube 25, you get 25% off of that, okay? So if you wanna learn about mastering, come back for the next video here, check out this playlist here on YouTube, but if you really wanna get into this without having to use something like Ozone, go check out Mastering Made Easy today. Again, leave comments below, let me know what you do for mastering, and until the next video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next Ozone 9 video. Take care.